guests, uh, Ashley uh, Van Ochten, who uh, will be joining us here momentarily. And last but not least, our um, uh, person who's got all the knowledge and all the, the willpower and all the uh, uh, enthusiasm in the world, Kathy Kress. And I know Kathy will probably be joining us here shortly as well. So with that, um, let's go ahead and get started. Karen, um, would you like to take the reins here? Sure, sure. Um, I'm starting to prep my roast vegetables because my recipe for today is roast vegetable immunity boosting soup. And it's a, I'm glad it's a rainy day. It's a good soup day. Um, I love soups. I love how much you can put in them. Uh, vegetables, protein, um, lots of vitamins and fiber that comes in the soup. And I just love roasting vegetables. I don't know how many people are roasting vegetables at home. But if you're not, it's an easy, awesome way of eating vegetables. Um, and it really brings out a lot of flavor. So I'll start, if you can see my demo, I've been, um, I cut up cauliflower into little pieces. I'm putting it on my baking sheet, my roasting sheet over here. Oh, I'll get in the shower if you. I'm not getting in the jar. Oh, yeah. Okay. For sure. I have yes, carrots right. on there already. I just went ahead and used I baby carrots. Yeah. I didn't even have to chop them. Um, if you want them a little smaller, you could cut them in half. Um, I'm going to peel a golden beet. I wanted mm. to sort of show people how delicious beets are. And golden beets aren't quite as a earthy flavor as maybe a red beet. So, yeah, can uh, can I ask a, a quick, or just just make a recommendation for those not that familiar with Zoom in the upper right hand corner, you can change your view from um, just having everybody's picture there to just the speaker's picture. So you get a, a bigger view of, of what actually Karen's preparing. Yeah, and there is a demo view because I have a camera. Hopefully people can see that looking right at my, um, my cutting board. Yes, there's a there's a view that says Karen's demo view. And if you pick, like Rick said, that upper right hand corner, there's a way that it says pin. And if you click on pin, it'll give you a, a fuller screen view of what Karen's doing um, on the countertop. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Brett. Thanks, Rick. Sure. Well, hopefully you can see me. So with the beat, I like to cut off the ends and I peel it. And we'll get this in little pieces and put it on my roasting sheet. So roasting vegetables really brings out of uh, the natural sugars, mm. which are a lovely, uh, a, a healthy sugar, I would say for your body. Um, and the roasting process just really brings out the sweetness of the cauliflower that we're gonna do, this yellow golden beet, the carrots I'm gonna put on there too. Um, so I'm carefully gonna slice it in half and cut it into about one inch chunks and get this on my roasting sheet. Those sugars that you're talking about, Karen, those are those kind of really sort of sweet, chewy bits around the edges that get a little bit brown and when you're roasting them, right? Yeah, well, the sugars come out when you are uh -huh. roasting um, at that high heat, because I'm gonna put it in about 425 for about 15 to 20 minutes. And yeah, that kind of crispy part, it's not the protein part, it's but it's the sugars that come out and just make that yummy roasty flavor um, that's so delicious. <laughs> and we're gonna put it in a broth uh, to make a yummy soup. But I would also say, you don't have to put it in a soup, you could just have it as a side, um, a side dish, which mm. I do with my family all the time. Should we put up the recipe? Do people want to see sure. the, the recipe? Sure, I can do that. No, go off this um, demo view of yours for just a second, but then everybody can see the recipe here right quick. Hold okay. on. Uh -huh. And then, Brett, can we also put the recipe in the chat? Yep, I'll do that afterwards so everybody right. has that so they can either download or print themselves. Yes, right. thanks, Joe. Yeah, and just a, a, another uh, word about the chat. I did put the instructions for being able to see Karen's demo view in the chat. So if, if you, you're still having trouble with it, just go there and step by step on how to access that. Great. Yeah. And if you scroll down, I'm really doing the part that's the roasting, the just the vegetables part. 
which is a great recipe if you just want to have it as a side of vegetables. Um, so I think you can still, you want to go back to the demo? Sure, we could do that. And there's Karen again. So here's my pan of veggies. I've got my carrots. I will put that in the view. And my beets. They're about this. They're going to all roast for about 10 minutes. So I'm, I'm sprinkling olive oil on it, about a tablespoon or two. It'll help. And olive oil is healthy for you too, a healthy, good fat for you. I sprinkle on a little bit of salt. You don't need too much, but of course, if you have um, high blood pressure or anything, you could, you do not have to do any salt. I actually have some um, fresh rosemary from my garden and a little bit of thyme. I'm just going to throw it right on top just to give it a little bit of flavor as it roasts. So I'm going to quickly stick this in my oven. And I'm going to let that roast for about 10 minutes because the next thing I will roast will be my onion and my garlic, but I don't want to put those in with my heavier, thicker vegetables because they will burn but, or they cook at different, um, different times. So I'll prep the onions and garlic and put that in in about 10 minutes and give that another five or seven minutes to roast. Do you want to see me prep garlic? Hey, Karen, help me. Karen, Karen, help me out. When you say roast, are you putting it in the oven on bake or you put it in on broil? Where, like where, how? Yeah, so I preheated my oven to 425. Um, it's not a broil, it's just a, a bake. Um, uh -huh. of course my oven is a convection bake, but you could just do a, a basic bake if you don't have a convection oven. Um, yeah, 425, a nice hot oven is what you want to put it in on. Um, you can, we can, I'll stir it probably in about 10 minutes, but it's a pretty okay. quick, easy um, a process, which is also nice. Okay. And on a cold day, turning on your oven, if you have one, um, is also <laughs> nice. You can, you can also do it in a toaster oven, but of course you would just use a smaller tray. If you're a one person, huh. you could do, you could easily half the recipe or quarter the recipe um, to, to suit your needs or to suit your, um, your appliances. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So Karen, I have to ask how many uh, Zoom cooking demos have you done before this one? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell? I'm really trying. <laughs> what I was going to say was I, I'm very impressed. And I think, um, you know, we, we, uh, I don't want to say we took a chance here, but, you know, we've, as, as we've done these events every month, we've tried to do something different, right? And we've tried yeah. to do something that's um, you know, kind of building upon what we've done the month before. And so I want to start off by saying thank you for um, taking the leap of faith and doing it. I think it turned out uh, so far, it turned out great um, doing the multiple camera angle. And I hope everybody on the call has been able to um, navigate how to, um, to see that uh, while, while Karen's uh, performing the uh, prep work here. Um, so I know that we're going to um, wait a little while, allow, allow things to happen uh, in the convection oven and come back to it. Um, but let's, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit more, you know, as Britt was saying, when, when we were planning out this event, we, we were talking about food and we all started getting pretty excited about, you know, just the role food plays, um, not only, um, you know, in the most basic, um, uh, aspect of it, you know, that we all, you know, we, we, we all, we all enjoy food. We all like food. We all eat food. We all need, uh, that nourishment, but, but also the, the social health, the mental health aspects of it, um, not only from um, you know, the benefits you get from having a balanced diet and eating things that, um, that provide the, the, the nourishment that, that we all need, but also um, you know, the, the activity surrounding prepping food, buying food, uh, preparing food, enjoying food with your family and friends, um, and, and all that comes from that. And so, you know, I, I, I think there, there, there's so much to explore and talk about on our prep calls. We, we you know, filled up the entire uh, scheduled amount of time by just bantering about it. Mm -hmm. So um, and I want to turn it over to both you and, and, and Rick to have a little conversation along those lines and, um, and, and kind of, you know, if others have, uh, that are on this call will have some comments or questions, please feel free to jump in. As you all know, those of you who joined us before, it's a it's a wide open forum. 
uh, the new folks here, please don't be bashful. <laughs> it's true. Uh, well, I, I can uh, jump in on that for a, a moment, uh, if that's all right with folks. And so uh, the, the key ingredient that I think maybe was not uh, explicitly written on, on the recipe, but that I think is obvious in the demo uh, is the love uh, that goes into uh, the preparation and that being probably the, the, the key ingredient. And, and then so it, uh, along the lines of you know, the importance of, of food and this, all the symbolism that it carries, you know, the breaking of bread and, and gathering and the importance of that. Uh, I don't know how many times, you know, someone has given me a, a, a gift where it was a meal that they made, right? And, and there, I don't need an object. I don't need another sweater. But like if someone like makes a, a dozen tamales for me, like I just, I know that so much like love went into that. And, and so I know that the gift giver probably feels better than me by bringing me that sort of joy and the importance of, of bringing joy to others, whether it's through food or, or some other activity has benefits to us as well. So it's kind of one of those uh, rare cross sections where in, uh, so we, can, we get something out of it by giving to others, where we, by being a little selfish, like I kind of want to feel good, uh, so we give to others. And, and so it's a really nice uh, cross section where everybody essentially wins. And so, um, you know, in, in a day and age when things are so uncertain um, and we can't, we don't always feel comfortable going to the grocery store and shopping online may seem so impersonal, like, you know, just baking a loaf of bread for someone is, is such uh, an act of kindness. Um, I, I can't emphasize it enough. And, it, you know, no medication, no re prescription required. Um, you know, you don't need any kind of fancy credentials at the end of your last name to be able to do something like that. And, and even if it's, even if it's goofed up, like, I think people really don't care. I think they just like being thought of, you know? Uh, I have shared with, with my wife just a personal story. Like when we first got married, she didn't feel super confident in the kitchen. I'm like, go in there and have fun. I don't care if you burn it down, just as long as you have fun doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that I think this is the most important thing is that this is something that we can enjoy. There's joy in the experimentation and the smiles that we bring uh, to others. So I'm a huge fan of, uh, of utilizing food and nurturing and meal prep. Uh, to make people feel good. It's medicinal at the end of the day. It's medicinal. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, it's giving your son, you something to do, especially during this COVID stuck at home time. I think people have been baking more, or eating more. I know I have. Um, <laughs> and, and to try to do something healthy. And even with the soup, like you were saying, Rick, you can make a bigger batch and maybe leave it on your neighbor's porch. I did that to my neighbor just last week. He, we unfortunately lost his wife and I thought, oh, I'm going to bring him something. And I wanted to give him something. And I wanted, I made this soup to prepare for this. And um, I was like, oh, I'm going to share it, share it with my neighbor and even safely left it with a little note on his porch. So it is a, it's yeah. good for you. It's good to, to share with other people. And it is really fun to try something new to tr maybe try a new vegetable Maybe you try the golden beet or this recipe is really versatile. You really could grab a potato from your cupboard or some extra vegetables that you just have in your um, in your cupboard, frozen vegetables or a can of vegetables. I would only suggest that you rinse off all the salt from your canned vegetable. Right. But um, it's really versatile and 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 opens up um, a, a a lot. To do. You could really do a lot with it. Right. Okay. Um, I wonder if I could interject a comment at this point, if you don't mind. Yeah. This is Stephen Matsey. Um, I, just what I was hearing um, uh, being spoke of was, you know, the joy, of course, that food brings. You know, I, I know all about that. I remember as a kid really loving family time around the dinner table. And while my mom wasn't, you know, a, a superior cook, she brought to the table her love and, and uh, energy with the, anything that she made. But what, um, what came to mind was folks that maybe having some cognitive challenges, you know, the, the smells, the textures, the tastes, while they may have difficulty preparing the meal, I think that feeds their emotional and intellectual well-being as well by perhaps transporting them back to a, a travel destination that they loved or a memory of, again, gathering around the table, especially now more than ever, you know, when we get, we're disconnected from those from those, uh, those threads, right, that run through each of us intrinsically. 
Right. Um, so that, you know, really was, was, was speaking to me and Clay did a chat saying he's imagining how your house must be smelling uh, in a few <laughs> minutes, you know, and that's what brings me back, you know, the smells and the textures and the taste. So regardless of where we are cognitively, I think that can feed our emotional well-being and our psychological well-being as well. Thank you for that. Yeah. I wish with all of this technology and Zoom and everything, there was the smell of vision. <laughs> it is. I'm smelling the rosemary. I'm smelling the sweetness of the beets, and it's a warming, like you were saying, a warm feeling. And your smell and senses are really yeah. attached to memories. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so, Karen, if if it's okay, I'd like to share on the love. When I used to cook for my children, um, I used to I used to tell them, "Can you smell and can you taste the love in in whatever <laughs> I had fixed." And they would be eating and they would be saying, mm, yes, you know, they just used to love to eat and taste. And then I did that to my grandchildren. And so the grandchildren started tasting the love that I used to put in whatever it was that I was cooking. Oh. But it, there is a lot of love when you cook yeah. and um, things that, you know, I haven't gone anywhere. That's what I've been doing a lot is cooking. So when, you know, my husband walks in the, the, the house, he smells whatever it is that I'm cooking. And I share it with the neighbors. I've been making muffins and you name it, I've been cooking. <laughs> but it, it's just, it's pleasing to us fixing the meal or whatever it is that you're fixing because you're giving of yourself to the neighbors and to somebody else. But um, anyway, I, I'm so enjoying this. And I have a question. I hope somebody, I hope somebody can help me with this. I have been ordering my vegetables online and they deliver them to my doorstep. I got this and I don't know what it is. Is, is it, it a, a, is a turnip? Is it what is, is it? I think it's a kohlrabi. I, I think so. It, it's, like, it, it's a kind of a root vegetable. You can roast it very similar to the beet that I had, like the golden okay. beet. Uh huh. I would cut off the greens. I'm not sure. I think the greens are edible. I'm not positive. Chickens would love them. <laughs> but so it's usually in the root and people roast it. I'm pretty okay. sure that's a kohlrabi. It starts with a K. Okay. Kohlrabi. Kohlrabi. Yeah, it's easily roasted. I think you could probably cut it in half and bake it also kind of like a butternut squash. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. How fun. <laughs> and uh, thanks for letting we, me share. Yeah. We used to get CSA boxes where you'd buy the produce directly from the farm and there would be some things in there that honestly I had never identified. And it's, it's kind of fun to figure out what it is and then uh, find a recipe that you can actually uh, utilize to utilize the, the CSA ingredients and everything in there. Um, I've just put in the chat, I just wanted to interrupt right quickly. I've got a couple of polls that I'm just gonna post up for people who wanna respond to them and all, and then we can share the results and see how as a group we're, we're doing with our, our eating and our likes and dislikes and everything. So I just encourage everybody to respond, they're anonymous. Thanks. I'm going to go back to prepping the onions because I'm going to stir my roast veggies and throw in my onion and garlic. That's a good poll, Britt. And it definitely <laughs> needs to be anonymous. For me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so Karen is going back to prepping. So if you want to, uh, folks, if you want to go back to the Karen's demo view uh, block and click on pin, um, you can do that and see what Karen is working on on the cutting board there. Uh, while, while she's doing that, I, I do have a question for, um, for Rick. So, you know, Rick, one of the things that we talked about um, yesterday on our prep call, uh, you know, kind of stepping back a bit just from, you know, from the, from the actual like, literal food aspect of it and thinking about, you know, as something that brings joy and happiness to people, um, you know, as a hobby, as, you know, really allowing yourself to, to indulge in, um, in, in all that goes with preparing food and, and the, um, 
you know, all the, the, the good vibes, the good feelings that you get from that and just how important finding positivity and finding um, fulfillment is right now. Um, you know, I, I just, my question for you is like, how, how would you frame that in, you know, kind of the importance of, of you know, we're, we're mostly at home, we're not getting out as much, we're not interacting with people, but really, um, you know, taking to heart, uh, uh, you know, kind of the, 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 the aspect that the, almost the art of doing this and, and how, how you can find fulfillment in, um, in creation. Mm. And, um, you know, kind of, sure. you know, talking about just sort of the, the, the wow. mental health aspects to that. I think that, um, you know, several people kind of already, you know, alluded to it or really even kind of hit the nail on the head in that, uh, you know, it brings us a sense of purpose, uh, a sense of mission uh, uh, to be able to do things. And, you know, at a time when, you know, a lot of people have, have lost their jobs or, or lost their, their, their way or just feel lost in general and, and what's going to happen next. Um, you know, we, we talked to a lot of people that are trying to feel good or feel joy again. And in a weird way, I'll try to reframe that rather than seeking joy, I'll encourage people to seek a sense of purpose or a sense of meaning. And um, in so doing, we have to find things to do. We, you know, there's a, a role and a function. And so um, you know, in my role, there are certain duties that I need to do, and, and I feel good doing those things, and it makes me feel comfortable and confident in my role. So I, I think that being able to prepare a meal for someone, or, or maybe if one can't do it the, themselves, um, maybe they can impart a, a family recipe to the next generation. So maybe they're not doing the actual meal prep themselves, but like, you know, grandma's recipe and, and, and having grandma share that with me, that storytelling is, is, is helpful, right? So there's just so many connections uh, that can be made at such visceral uh, levels. And I really like uh, the earlier comment around, you know, being able to appeal to the, to the five senses and, and the, the sight and the sounds and the smell of the, the sizzling and, and the olfactory things. So I think that uh, meal prep and nurturing and eating, again, is just, it's critical to who we are as people, as humans, and, and feeling like we have a sense of mission. As a parent, I feel joy. It brings me joy in making food for my kids. Uh, even if they throw it across the table, uh, you know, as as a pair, as a grandparent, being able to kind of pass down, you know, grandma's uh, a recipe. So there, there's really no bad or unhealthy aspects to it, um, as far as I, I can see. You know, I can talk real scientific about clinically, you know, certain things about food, but um, you know, I think right now the purpose is is to really kind of uh, celebrate uh, its importance and its value. Right. And I just want to share if I can, uh, Mary, I, I really like that, that jar uh, there in the background, you know, it, the theme, it, it reminds me of my grandmother's kitchen uh, and my mom's. We, we had that same exact one. And I don't know what, if, if most people know what that is, but that's actually intended for water. You it is. Put it in the fridge. It keeps it cool. Like I haven't seen one of those in a while. And I used to have one my own self. They're great. Uh, I've, I've had it for a long time. I don't put anything in it though. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's inspiration than anything, but I know it is for water. Yeah. So, Karen, could you tell us while while Rick was speaking, I saw you take the ingredients out of the oven and then you added some, and it looked like you added olive oil. Is that correct? I did. Um, I added my onion. That was the second part after roasting. After the first ten minutes, I chopped an onion and I um, crushed a little garlic. I threw that on top of my veggies that were already in there and gave them a little stir with a little more olive oil. And they're gonna be in for another like seven to eight minutes to give the onions a sweet roast and the garlic a little bit of roast. And then they'll be ready to put into our broth for our soup. So um, you have to do the onions and garlic a little bit later just because they're not as a thick of a vegetable. So um, they'll burn if you put them in early. So I put them in about halfway, that's what I was doing. It smelled delicious. It was steamy and and uh, yummy. <laughs> I, really yeah, wish we were, I really wish we were able to figure out how to yeah. how to get the virtual smell uh, smell going through here through Zoom. I know. But, I, if, you know, if I could find all of you, I would bring you some soup. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe. Yeah, maybe maybe that'll be an update <laughs> next year on on the uh, the software. Um, so yeah. 
So then the other thing, Karen, is we got to figure out how how um, we're going to deliver a uh, sample to this to everybody on the call. Maybe maybe next time we'll we'll uh, we'll work that out as well too. Yeah, um, I got a soup drive through or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, any uh, any questions or comments from from the uh, from any participants at this point? We can move on to a little bit more discussion. Great. I just shared the poll results there for everybody too, if you wanted to see. We only had uh, maybe two thirds of the folks respond, but of that, it looks like that uh, a good third of you all are eating healthy every day. So congratulations, you you make up for me, who's probably um, rarely or never, and that's why I didn't reply. <laughs> But thank you for your thank you for your candid responses. And there's another poll that we'll put up here in a little bit as the conversation goes on. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, Brett, I feel like I'm in the same boat as you are. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's interesting. Um, I, I feel like I've uh, during the this past year, um, I've actually been cooking a lot more myself. My wife mm -hmm. normally does a lot of the cooking and she's a fantastic cook and loves doing it. Um, and I've been trying to find that that connectivity and that joy that she has to it yeah. uh, so I can enjoy it more. Because I, I think in the past, I've always looked at it like when it was my night to cook, um, I was like, oh, God, you know, yeah. what am I going to do? You know, like, <laughs> you know, I'm digging, I'm digging through the pantry for pasta yeah. and red sauce. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to throw something together. But watching what, what you know, this past year, I've, I've learned a lot more, but also watching you know, what Karen is doing. And when we were talking about putting this together, we wanted to have a recipe that, that all of us could feel comfortable and confident working from and something that would be delicious and easy to do within a 45 minute span of time, which you can see we're coming up on about 40 minutes since the cooking demonstration started. And um, I think it just shows, you know, we, we've done, discussions about physical health. We've talked about mental health. We've talked about being careful and safe in those regards. But just again, going back to the overarching theme of this, just the importance that food and nutrition plays uh, in complementing the other things that right. we've covered in this series of events. Um, it, it, it just, it's, it's just right up there at the same level with, with all of them, with the other aspects yeah. of, of overall health. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's. There are a couple of questions, uh, Joe, in the chat I'm looking at from Christy, um, who wanted to know about olive oil and whether it was okay to heat at, at really high temperature. She thinks it, or she's heard that it oxidizes. Well, I do know that it's not usually a frying sort of oil. It's not something that you would fry in and it can burn at a high heat. The roasting at 425 for the 20 minutes, I don't ever have a problem with. I've done it with potatoes. I do it with vegetables. Um, so I think that that's, oh, that that's okay. I don't get a different flavor or a burn flavor mm -hmm. or, um, or anything like that. But if you, I, I love olive oil. It's a little, it has more omega-3s and it's a little more heart healthy for an oil, but you also could use a canola oil, which is a high heat oil. Um, or a different kind of vegetable oil to roast in. Um, I like the flavor of it and I don't, I don't ever get a burning sort of, of sense. I, I do, that can happen when I do it on the stove mm -hmm. and it can um, do that, but roasting, I don't seem to have that problem. So I think okay. it's okay. And most recipes are olive oil for roasting is fine. Great. And there's also a couple of other questions too, just since I've got them up here, Joe. Um, it's um, she, uh, there's a question about using frozen dark greens versus fresh and would it change the, the recipe flavor or you, do, would you use different proportions of, of frozen uh, greens versus the, the fresh? Well, fresh really cooks down a lot. That's why the recipe, when you look at it, it says it does say two cups of fresh. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you did the frozen, you would do one cup. Um, because it is, a, it's already kind of cooked down a little bit, um, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't really change too much. You could probably just use a little bit less. I would say sometimes frozen like spinach or something is really wet. So sometimes if you let it defrost, you could kind of squeeze out the water, but actually in this recipe with a soup, 
I would say put it in frozen. You could put in okay. any frozen peas, frozen uh, corn, whatever you feel like you want to add to this um, recipe would would work. Yeah. Okay. And then the last one, in, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask if anyone is familiar or, or Karen, if you were familiar with uh, or are we fans of, uh, there's been a, a local olive uh, place for a few years now called True Olive uh, Connection. I think they used to have two sites. Maybe they're just in downtown now, but uh, have folks been there? Do we, do we like this spot? I've, I've never been. I've only walked by like a thousand times. I think, yeah. I think the place downtown closed. I don't think it made it through this pandemic. I think the last time I walked on that street. Yeah, uh, but you can, I, um, you can, oils. yeah, you can order, they're, they're still open online. You can order online and she meets, I think it's every two weeks down um, close to uh, Wild Roots there uh, off of Mission is where her pickup spot is. I've, I've picked up there a couple of months ago for Christmas gifts. So um, I know they still have an online presence, but you're right, the physical location is closed. Yeah, and I was wonderful to think product. I've been, I've been defending at the farmer's market, but I, mm -hmm. the last time I was at the farmer's market, I don't remember seeing an olive oil person. But right. you know, sometimes there is. <laughs> So hey, I, last, last question before we move on. There's another question in the chat about a, 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 a meat stock. Um, and uh, the, the, the question is around the commercial products, bouillon, that kind of thing, inferior taste. Do you have any suggestions, Karen, on how to make a real good meat stock? Um, like homemade or using... Um using a bouillon cube was that the question? no it seems like that was the one that she didn't want to use she didn't like the flavor of that so i, I would assume from fresh some fresh well i yeah. make my own chicken stock but mm. if, if she means um you could also do it with beef but i mostly i use the bones so that's what i just poured into my um my my soup pot here was my chicken broth that i make mm. um but it's really easy to get one of those boxes of broth. Um, that's about four cups, but those come in veggie, beef, chicken. But mm -hmm. when I make my own broth, it's more about having the bones. Mm -hmm. um, so if I have a whole chicken or I've had some chicken breasts that we're going to eat, um, I'll throw those into a big pot of water, salt, pepper, bay leaves, onions, celery, carrots. Mm. And let that boil for like a good hour and boil and then simmer. You got to, there's a lot of things to broth, but it's a loving thing to do too, to, to make your own broth. Um, you skim off the top, then you can skim off the fat too, because it will rise to the top. But um, it's actually, a, it's a pretty nice thing to do. I like it. You use all, you use everything. So you have those little bits of bones, um, and you can use it as really, really good flavor. I take off the extra meat and give it to my dogs, but it comes <laughs> off after I boil all the bones off. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but there are lots of good broths on, on the on the shelves to buy too. Great, thank you so much. Appreciate it. I think that's all the questions that I saw in the chat anyway for the short term. Oh, great. Well, I have my broth already boiling on my demo because I can mm -hmm. see my veggies on the sun. I'm gonna throw in um, my Swiss chard. That's my fresh greens that I chose. That's some of my favorite greens. <laughs> so I'm throwing those right in, and I'm gonna check my roast veggies right now and put them in my put them in my broth. And while you're doing that, I just so happen to have a poll about greens that I'll put up there if people yeah. want to respond to that. Also anonymous. Britt, I, I love your polling. <laughs> Thank you. you know, uh, yeah, you always come up with the best best questions here, on the fly. Yeah. Well, you know, it's um, sort of in this day of where you don't want to do political polling. Uh, it's much better to poll about <laughs> food. Yeah, <laughs> food is good. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. I have my my roast veggies are out of the oven oh, now. Oh, they're beautiful. They're um. They're firm, but soft. Since they're going to go in the soup, I don't want them to be too mushy because they're going to cook a little bit longer. I'm going to remove my thyme stems and my uh, rosemary, but a little flavor of it is okay, but no one wants to eat the woody, the woody stems. And I'm literally just going to scoop it right into my broth. 
Forget and Karen, that. Karen, tell me again, you like the idea of roasting to before putting them into the pot because you th they're, they're unlocking a different kind of flavor than if I had just thrown them in there raw and let them cook in the pot. Yeah, which is fine too. You can do a nice steamed or boiled vegetable soup that way, but they're, the roasting at the high heat in, in the oven um, just really brings out the sugars, natural sugars of the right. I like it. Yeah, Jay, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. if, if, you, if you can so go on mute. Just a, it's just Thanks, a guys. roasty flavor. I also really would suggest just leaving this as a side with um, your dinner or your lunch. Mm -hmm. You could just have this as a side. Sometimes at my family, I put a sausage or two mm -hmm. on there, and that really gives the vegetables more fat, but that can be a whole meal. Um, mm -hmm. A, a boneless chicken breast right on top too, which is also a suggestion for the soup. If you wanted to make it with um, meat or um, more protein that way, you can chop up a sausage. If you have some leftover chicken in your refrigerator, um, add some rice, some pasta. It's really kind of a really versatile sort of uh, soup to add whatever you want, really. Right, right. So you're Wonderful. Really getting, awesome. You're really getting the roasty, yummy flavor in your soup. Um, I'm just going to let this cook down for about 10 minutes. The thing, I didn't add meat to this today, but I am going to add, excuse me, I rinsed a can of beans. Oh. There's some, there's some white beans that I got. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, and throw those in. So I rinse them just to get some more of the sodium off and I'm just gonna throw that right into my, my soup pot. So you're using the beans as your protein rather than, uh, rather than meat. Right, right. I mean, I, my broth is a chicken broth, but, oh, that's right. but I, like I said, that's not gonna give you too much protein, but your main protein is the, it's gonna be the beans. It's a nice, healthy vegetarian protein. Um, but you could easily, like I said, you could add some, shredded chicken to this, some turkey. Um, I would top it off with a little Parmesan cheese too. So you can get a little protein and flavor with that too. Um, oh, great. Uh, lots of, lots some of, of our poll, options. some of our veg, green vegetable poll results are up if people want to check that out and see who you're, uh, you're, you're sharing your produce aisle with. Um, and it's interesting, it's a good spread of responses, everything from Broccoli to Brussels sprouts to edamame, arugula, and I'm sure I've left some out because there's a few people that answered other. Um, but it's great. That's a that's a really nice selection. And I wonder how that would change regionally. I was just kind of curious if we were to do this, you know, Texas or Maryland, whether we would see as many uh, um, disparate selections at all. California's got a, a great access to a lot of good produce, so I wonder how that would change regionally. But thank you for your candid replies. With our uh, proximity to uh, Castroville, the artichoke uh, capital of the world, I was expecting right. to see artichokes uh, at, at the top of the list there. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Terrific. Great. And, and, and Britt, uh, being from Arkansas, I, I actually picked okra. Um, <laughs> we, you know, I mean, I, 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 there are so many good choices on that list, but, you know, talking about regionally and geographic uh, yeah. differences, yeah, that that was, uh, for whatever reason, that, that just... First thing yeah. to mind for me. Very the good. The one that was uh, conspicuous in his absence for me was the uh, avocado. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, and it's good to know that there are, beyond the 10 here, there are people who have favorites that could extend into 15 or 20. So again, as long as you're finding that that variety and that um, that one that 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 you really like or several that you like. Again, I think it's part of staying balanced and and getting all the different nutrients from all the different kinds of foods that are available to us, rather than just getting stuck with kind of the the same old every time you go to the grocery store. That was a part of this discussion today too, is to give uh, impart some new ideas on on how you might approach um, food preparation and and what you use to to prepare meals for you and your family. Sure, and roasting a new vegetable that you haven't tried before is a good way of introducing it and if the mm -hmm. different flavors or mixing it with other vegetables too, um, to get it in. That's how I get my kids to eat a lot of vegetables is with soup. <laughs> they don't, right. Cause they're enjoying it. They don't really know everything that's in it either. 
So my soup is kind of boiling. Now I'll let my greens cook and then it's it's go time for soup. I'll, like I said, I'll probably add a little bit of cheese to the top. Croutons would be really yummy. Mm -hmm. Nice crusty bread. Um, cool. I had a question for you, Rick. Rick, I had a question for you. I, you always hear, um, we always hear sort of missives or, or, or at least guidance around the dangers of eating alone, not dangers, but the pitfalls, I guess, of eating alone or, um, you, know, a, you know, not putting a lot of thought into the food you're preparing and all of that. I, I mean, is it just kind of what we assume that it, there's just kind of this danger of overeating, I guess, if you're eating alone or, or are there other sort of pitfalls or downfalls to not being able to break bread with people as you'd suggested earlier? Uh, it's a great question. I think the pitfall for a lot of things, whether it's food or, or not, uh, even, even drinking alcohol maybe even, uh, huh. is, is just the concept of preconceived notions in general. Meaning, you know, we might have these sort of assumptions about X, Y, or Z, and, and those assumptions might be based on, on fact or, or maybe just sort of our own subjective kind of perceptions. And, and so what I would encourage there, just from a general perspective, is the importance of, you know, operating on, on, on fact and not going off of preconceived notions necessarily. And so like if we see or we know of someone who's eating alone or how many times have we been at a restaurant and we see someone dining alone and then what kind of, you know, stories do we start making up in our head about that person and right. how isolated or lonely they must be. Yeah, ironically, you know, they might be the happiest person in, in, the, in, the, in the restaurant, right? <laughs> Uh, because they're comfortable in their own skin and and what kind of confidence might that speak uh you know or say about that sort of person who's totally comfortable going uh to dinner by themselves or totally comfortable going to a, a movie by themselves or some other you know activity so i think that the pitfall for preconceived notions is <laughs> the preconceived notions themselves Notion. right. and you know i boast that i've been a therapist for 27 years and in that time, I still don't have the ability to read people's minds, right? You know, <laughs> but I want that. That'd be scary. So, you know, we never really know what's going on for someone. But I think, right. uh, you know, ask, asking them if you're comfortable with that or just kind of like realizing that there's lots of different stories that could be going on for that sort of a person. Right. right. Um, so one thing that I do kind of want to add, because I, I can't uh, help myself but to throw this in there, um, and because I'm going to have to jump off soon, the, the, the role of, of eating and appetite you know, is important from, from the mental health perspective. It is a, a, a core fundamental thing that we do assess for. When we do our uh, assessments of clients, you know, we ask them about their appetites. Uh, mm -hmm. Do they experience hunger, right? Do they experience hunger? Uh, because we know that loss of appetite or an increase in appetite can be a symptom of depression. It can be a symptom of uh, anxiety. And, and so we don't overlook the importance of appetite from a mental health perspective. Uh-oh. Wow. No. <laughs> uh oh, Rick. I'm in a brand new building over here. I'm one of three people in this building. Somebody's cooking. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you might have to go. Um, anyways, you appetite's important. We assess it uh, a, a lot. I'm going to go now. So, yeah, okay, uh, Rick. Yeah. Totally. So, yeah. Nice to meet you all. Okay, th care. thank you, Rick. Thanks for, for joining us. Right. And uh, hopefully, it's just a drill. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, goodbye. Bye. Thanks, Rick. Be safe. Take care. Thank you. Um, so can I add another comment along the lines of the well-being and food connection? Yeah. Thank you. You know, it's sort of been alluded to during um, other responses uh, about food and its connection to us as, as human beings. You know, for me, I think it's important to also keep it connected on a spiritual level. Um, you know, especially when I love to bake. And there's nothing more meditative or mindful than mixing the ingredients and putting them together and being very thoughtful about what you're creating. Um, and of course, eating, that's often a spiritual experience for many of us, you know, who's had a little <laughs> piece of chocolate cake that they just said, praise Jesus or whoever you are. <laughs> um, so it's important, I think, you know, food transcends just as has been mentioned, the physical need that we have, but the spiritual, the emotional and the intellectual connections. Um, so I really appreciated this, uh, this demonstration today um, and being a part of this conversation. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you.
Jared, well, you know, to, to jump in here j- just for a quick sec, when we were planning this, one of the things that we were all talking about is, you know, just that importance of breaking bread together and, you know, and sharing that experience. And I've really gotten that feeling from this, you know, this webinar, and I hope others have too, because even though we're not actually, you know, eating the food, I, I certainly feel, you know, that Karen is doing that sharing piece uh, of cooking for others that Rick was talking about earlier. And, you know, it just, um, you know, this might be my favorite of all of these that we've done, just because of the sense of togetherness that I think we're all having by, uh, you know, doing this and sharing a meal. And my point, I actually had a point, um, was that, you know, Zoom can actually be a way to share a meal together, you know, and, and I know I do this once in a while with my friends where we'll have a Zoom meal or a Zoom happy hour and we just connect, you know, not in person, it's not as good as that, but we at least get to see each other and have that mental health connection happen. So um, for all of you on here or with relatives, I, I would encourage you to, to set that up and you know, make those connections right. in that friendly, personal way um, by any means possible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Clay. Thank you, Clay, yeah. Um, so uh, we just have a couple of minutes left. Any other questions or comments before I hand things over to Karen to finish up the cooking demo? And then we'll go to uh, Rick, who does our traditional closeout. I just wanted to point out one thing that in the chat, Patty Talbot had shared with us that there was some a good selection of olive oils at Trader Joe's um, for because the olive connection can be a little expensive, but it doesn't have to be expensive if you want to use good quality ingredients and Trader's has some some really good quality products there too. Agreed. You can find a, a pretty good olive oil at Safeway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Final comments on the the demonstration? Yeah, well, my soup is at a nice little simmer. Um, I would probably simmer it for another probably five or six minutes at least just to get all the flavors together. I did add some pepper. I have some cracked pepper here. This is also a place where if you want a little bit of spice, you could add a little bit of cayenne or um, turmeric or any kind of extra little spice that you might want to add to your soup. Um, I'm keeping it pretty plain. I added a little more, I added a tiny bit of salt, but my broth is actually nice and um, flavorful. So it's giving it quite a bit of flavor, but I did go ahead and put some in a bowl and I'm going to put some cheese on top of it. <laughs> a little fresh uh, uh, pecorino or Parmesan would be really good. Oh, wow. And there's my soup. That looks delicious. Yeah. I got to step up my lunch game. Yeah. This looks so good. I put the PB and J's away and, and <laughs> well, I want to say soup is such a good um lunch. It's a great dinner too. You can add it with a little bit of meat, like we already talked about. But uh, something like this, I'll probably freeze in smaller little containers and put it in my freezer to be able to pull out on a day. I'm like, what do I want? I don't know what I have, or something quick to take to work, or um. Just even share, we've been talking about sharing and sharing with our neighbors or something like that. But soup freezes really well. It defrosts well. Um, so I would recommend that making a big pot and, and saving it in the freezer. Thank you. Oh, the green stuff someone is asking. Oh, that was my Swiss chard. But you could use spinach, you could use kale. Um, I use. That's one of my favorite greens is Swiss chard. Yeah. All right. Trying to make Thank this you, work Karen. so my sweet um, husband is sitting You might hear some background noise. My me. wife's apologizing for the background noise that I'm <laughs> causing and I'm apologizing for the background noise she's causing. It was my phone just rang too, I'm sorry. But, um, so thank you all for joining us. You know, we're right right at past 11 o'clock. Um, and Karen, I see a spinoff happening here. We might have to do monthly cooking demos as well, too. So um, thank you so much. It. for I have good ideas. I have thank you so much ideas. for inviting us into your kitchen and, uh, and just a great job. I'm going to uh, hand things off to my colleague Rick Barr yes. from Kaiser Permanente to do our traditional closeout. Rick? Hey, thank you, Joe. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, I mean, this is, again, one of my favorites as well. I think I'm having soup for dinner, if not uh, earlier for lunch. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> but uh, thank you, uh, Karen, Rick, Galvin. I mean, just what an awesome, um, you know, uh, series this has turned into. Clay, Britt, Ashley, Joe, Kathy, Cress. You know, we all participated in putting this together, and you know, the sense of community that's come out of this is just mm -hmm. phenomenal. Uh, one last thing I did want to add is is um, I want to introduce Tony Vaca. Uh, Tony um, is the um, is the Medicare sales executive here in Santa Cruz County. But I just want to just do a quick introduction uh, of him. And again, thank you everybody for for your time and uh, for everyone's efforts and for the community spirit that this this has invoked. So Tony, yeah, hi, right. yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you Rick for that. Um, uh, you know what, like Rick said, this is one of my favorite uh, round tables and uh, I really appreciate all the information and comments that you got, that all of you made. And this reminds me of that one saying that says, um, you know, your health is your true wealth. And I'm a big believer in that. And I believe that uh, eating well and sharing meals with others um, is really important to longevity and long and happy lives. Um, again, thank you all. Uh, and my name is Tony. I am the Kaiser Permanente Medicare representative for Santa Cruz and Santa Clara counties. Um, I will leave my information on the um, chat box there. If, uh, you, if anyone wants to learn more how Medicare works with Kaiser Permanente and how Kaiser Permanente delivers care to its members. Right. Thank you, Tony. Thanks. Tony. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody. Have a great day. See you next month. Thank you. Absolutely. Have a good day. You too. All right. Bye. Uh, this is my, let's see. And there we go. Thanks, Brett, for all your help. Thank you, Karen. Thanks for being such a, a good sport about working at all the details. Thanks. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. You, you were like a pro. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. you were. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Stop. Bye. 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 Bye.